extra famous Waitos missing. Is it in the paper? Give him a chance to look. But it's so important, it must be on the front page. Oh, oh boob, it's important to us, but after all, it's only a... What do you mean by it's only? I bet it's the most important thing this paper's ever had. Well, if you give Gary a chance, maybe he can find out. If you both kept quiet, it'd be a very big help, thank you. Ah, here it is. Ten Town Fair. A monster fair and carnival will be held at Ten Town next Saturday. Fun and games for all. Everybody welcome. Proceeds to charity. Well, it sounds all right, but do you think many people will turn up? Well, I don't see why not, David. After all, so many people seem willing to help us. We've got so much to offer. We've got pony rides. What we need is a star attraction. A what? A star attraction. Something to really bring all the crowds in. Oh, you've been reading too many of those show business magazines. Why? They give you good ideas. Like the one you had last week. Well, turning Russell into a rock and roll singer. Russ hasn't been the same since. <laughs> Russell, why do you always stand that way? Well, wouldn't you if he made you practice the guitar every day for ten hours? You know, David, Boobler has got a good idea. We really do need a star attraction. Yes. But what? What could we possibly use as a star attraction? <laughs> straddle a chair. And now to business. I read in the paper this morning that you're to have a fair here on Saturday. That's right, O'Foot. But if you think you're going to get up to any more of your tricks... Tut, tut, tut. Don't unsaddle yourself, laddie. I have come to offer my help. Help? Now I've heard everything. O'Foot wanting to help us. Don't misunderstand me, laddie. I'm not going to help you, but this fair is for charity, isn't it? Yes. And with your usual incompetence, you have omitted to provide a really spectacular draw card for the public. What's he talking about? He means we don't have a star attraction. Then why doesn't he say so? Come, come, lad, speak up. You know, I for, for once in your life, you're right about this. I shall treat that remark with the contempt it deserves. And now, with my usual brilliance, I shall solve your problem. Freckles, is it hard to say all those big words? No. Why? Well, it's jolly hard trying to listen to them. No. Come on, if you've got a plan, let's hear it, Oakwood. All in good time, lads. All in good time. Groom, you're neglecting your duties. You tent towners are fairly proud of your horses, eh? Of course we are. Why do you ask? I challenge you to produce the best horse you have and match it in a cross-country race against mine. You must be joking. Match our best horse against that donkey of yours? Listen, Oakwood, even if I gave you a mile start, carried the horse in the back, I could still beat you. <laughs> Cut the comedy, little man. Is the race accepted? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Wait a minute, David. I think Oakwood's got quite a good idea there. Well, a horse race would attract the crowds, wouldn't it? And if we selected our slowest horse, we might make a race of it. Sound thinking, laddie. Then the race is on. May the better horse win, O'Foot. Father! Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. My Uncle Bill is also interested in helping your charity. So he has allowed me to select a horse from his stables to ride against you. <laughs>
our foot had outsmarted us again. I could just imagine what Jo was thinking as she wandered out the front gate. Well, boy, we're really in trouble now. <coughs> What's that? I wonder where he came from. Better take a look. He must be wild. But he's also pretty nervous, too. Wild. I wonder if I could just catch him. He might be the answer to our problem. Catch him? But how? Easy, boy, easy. Don't be scared. That's it. I wouldn't hurt you. You're wonderful. Now be a good boy and come home with me. That's the way. Racehorse or no racehorse, her foot was taking no chances. He was hard at work training. with the results. Joe had started her training also. Come on, boy, I know it's strange, but it's very necessary. Good boy. Just fasten up the strap, and then we'll try the saddle. See, it doesn't hurt you at all. You're behaving very well. It's almost as though you've been saddled before. But that's impossible. We'll just tighten up the girths now and see what happens. Now a leg up from Karen and we're on our way. Now, Boob, you're all set. But I tell you, David, I'm too young to die. Don't be silly. All we want you to do is ride Dixie in the race for us. But why me? I've told you a dozen times, Boobler. You're the lightest. We need every possible advantage we have to beat our foot. All right, then, but why am I up here now? The race isn't until Saturday. We have to train, Boobler. Why does Dixie need to train? All he has to do is run. But me, I've got to try and stay on up here. <laughs> Let's see how fast he is. Gallop down to that clump of bushes down there. Mm, all right, then. But I wouldn't be surprised if I got there before he did. Oh, we'll never beat her foot at this rate. Maybe Boobler was right. Perhaps we should concentrate on training our jockey. I don't understand it. I seem to be putting on a little weight. Oh, well. Groom! The hot box, if you please. What a body! Come on, hurry up. Put it on uh, low. I have very sensitive skin. You may leave now, but return in half an hour. Of course, you should be in opera. Same as you. Look at 
don't feel like that one today. You mean you're going to race against me? You ten towners are making this race too easy. I'd like a little competition. Wouldn't be too sure, I would. Might be a big surprise waiting for you. <laughs> Let me give you a, wo a word of advice, little man. You keep well away from me during this race, or I could make things very hot for you. Really? Yes. By the way, speaking of making things very hot, I don't know what it is, but they seem to be part of each other. What's his name? I don't know, but, well, I've got an idea. Seeing Joanne found the horse, trained it, and that she's going to ride it, why don't we enter it in the race under the name of Joe? Hmm, just think. The honor of Tintown being upheld by a horse named Joe. Hello, boy. Are you nervous? I am. I can't get to sleep. I wish they hadn't called you Joe. That's not a good name for a beautiful... <laughs> You're so sweet and dependable. You've got a heart as big as yourself. You're going to do your best tomorrow. And I know it'll be your best. And even if we do get beaten, it doesn't matter really. <laughs> I'll know you tried. Though I don't really believe that you'll be beaten. There isn't any horse in the world that can beat you. You're right on that point, my girl. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. There isn't going to be any race. Who are you? What are you doing here anyway? The name is Rory O'Callaghan. As to what I'm doing here, I've been looking for my horse. <laughs> it appears as though I found him. I don't understand. I found this horse running wild. I caught it and tamed it. Oh, wait a minute. Let's start at the beginning, girl. This animal belongs to me. I brought him out from Ireland to race for me. I don't believe it. I found him. He's my horse. Well, if you just stop interrupting, maybe I can explain it to you. You see, the day he arrived, he broke out of a stall. This is the first time I've laid eyes on him since. It's not true. You're just saying that so you can stop us from racing against Freckles O' Foot. O' Foot? Ah, yes, that's the name of the lad who rang me and told me where to find the Emperor. The Emperor? Yeah, that's the horse's name, the Emperor Joseph. The Emperor Joseph? With regards racing on Saturday, I'm afraid this young fella's got quite an amount of training to do before he's ready to race. He's ready now. I've been riding him every day. Please, Mr. O'Callaghan, please let the Emperor race. How can I explain it to you? Look, girl, this is a very valuable animal. Now, I, I just can't let a little girl like you ride him. Look, supposing something should happen to him. Or worse still, supposing something should happen to you. No, I, I, I just can't allow it. Mr. O'Callaghan, I promise you, nothing will happen to the Emperor or me. We can look after each other, please. No, I'm sorry it's out of the question. Well, I think you're the meanest man I know. And I'm never, ever, ever going to forgive you. And I'm sure Joe won't either. So it's there. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Now look what you've made me do. Come here, look at me when I'm talking to you. You made me break a little girl's heart. And the people in the village here are thinking I'm a bit of a monster. Whoever heard of an Irish horse with a name like the Emperor Joseph? You know, I think Joe suits you much better. Come on, if that's the way you feel about it. <laughs> I know Mr. O'Callaghan is right. You've got to go home. But I'm going to miss you terribly. 
And besides, we haven't got a chance against Oafoot now. I'll never find a horse like you again. Whilst Joe thought she had lost Emperor Joseph forever, he had different ideas. It was right here that I first saw him. I remember I heard him now. It's him. He's come back. Everything's going to be wonderful again. They couldn't keep you away, could they, boys? Come here, boy. Wait a minute. You've still got a bridle on. So this is where you are. What happened, Mr. O'Callaghan? Well, this morning I came to get his lordship to take him home, and he just took off. He didn't break out of his stall again. Oh, no. He waited till I opened the stable door, and then he knocked me flat, and away he went. How did you know where to find him? Well, if you promise not to laugh at me, I'll tell you. I won't laugh. Well, I had a little bit of a talk to him last night, you see. And he said he was very unhappy. He said I was most unfair in not letting you ride him. So when he took off, I figured if I followed him, I'd get to you. You mean that you talk to him too, Mr. O'Callaghan? Aye, I do, Les. And if you want to win this race today, you'll not only talk to him, but you'll sing to him as well. Mr. O'Callaghan, you're going to let me race him. I kind of thought to myself, any little lass who likes a horse as much as you, you do deserves the chance. Oh, thank you, Mr. O'Callaghan. You won't regret this, and I won't let you down. And I'm sure Joe won't either. I'm sure you won't, Les. Now, the first thing is, can you sing? Good. I'm sitting on top, top of the world. Uh, uh, look, Ophir, can't you be quiet for just a minute while I explain the course of the race? Certainly, my dear chap. But you must forgive my exuberance on this, my day of triumph. Oh, really? The race hasn't been run yet, Ophir. And if I was you, I wouldn't be too confident. I heard a rumor about that you had to return Joanne's horse. Such a pity. My heart bleeds for you. Now, Freckles, you shouldn't believe everything you hear, should you? What do you mean? You just wait and see, Freckles. I am glad to perceive, young lady, that you are dressed in a manner befitting the occasion. All right, Oafoot, now pay attention here. The course is marked out with white markers. You can check that here on the map. Now, this part down here is the cross-country part. You'll notice that the course leads to the Wallaby Creek showgrounds. When you reach there, You'll circle the ground once, and the first past the post is the winner. Any questions? No, Gary. Definitely not, old man. Good. You will both check at the starting point at two o'clock. All that's left for me to say is good luck. You'll need it. Do you really think so? <laughs> I remember what I told you, darling. Just give him his head. He knows what to do. But when you want the final burst, just sing the song to him. Why does that make him go, Mr. O'Callaghan? Oh, he's Irish and a bit stubborn. Whenever he hears that song, he travels so fast there's nothing in this world that can catch him. How does the song go again? Oh, Joseph, dear, and did you hear the news that's going round? This shamrock is by love forbid to grow on Irish ground. Well, oh, come on, darling. Let's show them what you can do. Thank you for the outfit, Mr. O'Callaghan. Ah, that's a pleasure. After all, you have to look well-dressed when you flash past that winner post, don't you? Now, here's the moment we've trained for. From now on, it's up to you and me. Freckles looks very sure of himself. Now, I must remain calm and remember everything Mr. O'Callaghan told me. And most important, when to sing the song.
Hollywood has the race in the bag, and Alice Joanne can come up with something really spectacular. It's all over by the shouting. I'm afraid, and look at the Irish is missing at Wallaby Creek today. Wait a minute, something seems to be happening down there. If I didn't know better, I'd say Joanne was singing to the horse. Joseph, dear, did you hear the music going round? The shamrock is fine, no for me to go on Irish ground. Just look at that horse move. I've never seen anything like it. He's coming down the street like a proverbial rocker. Joe fast, goes for one length, two length. There's no holding her. Oh, what happened to that? He's a class, he's won. It's the most remarkable performance I've ever seen. To come right from behind when everything seems lost and gain so much ground so fast. Why, it's almost unbelievable. And there goes the tempo. I knew he could do it. It's been the most wonderful day of my life. Thank you very much. And maybe you'll let me come and see the Emperor sometime. Sure, you can come and see him anytime. But uh, from now on, he's not going to be called the Emperor. He's going to be simply called Joe. Goodbye. <laughs>